It's a little late, but we've been taking pictures and doing things to get ready for our show. So, welcome everyone. What a great crowd today. We're so excited to have Perry doing our demo today, but I'll let Martha further introduce him. Um, I want to say, first of all, be sure you've paid your dues if you're a, re a returning member. They've now gone up to 50, so be sure and do that. Um, and then I wanted to let everybody know that David Nichols will be doing our demo in March, and that meeting is going to be at the library at night. Is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you were looking at me like, no. I was like, And um, do we have a so, date? Do we have a date for David's? Of course, I did not put the date down. What's the date? One second, I'll tell you. <laughs> of course, I did not write that down. Um, it's but the 20, it's at the 21st. 21st. Okay, Thursday, the 21st, 630 at the library. So that's that. And I want to just be as brief as possible, just give you a tiny update on our uh, website, just to say that we're still holding off making all the changes until... All the show things have happened, and we'll, I'll probably start working on that in the next few weeks, so starting those changes. I think we're probably at the end of memberships really coming in and, and show registrations. So really excited to get that going. And when we get that going, you will all be able to create your own page on the website. So just be thinking about what you want to put there, all of your contact information, photos, headshots, all that kind of thing. You, you'll be able to do it yourself. Um, and then also, I want to say our social media is going great. Thank you so much to those of you who are tagging us and uh, remembering to, you know, share your posts, with, especially on Instagram. It's, Instagram's a real different kind of a thing. Facebook's a little easier to share somebody's post if it's public. If it's not public... We can't share it, but if it's public on Facebook, then we love to be able to share your work. So please tag us in those. With Instagram, it's a little more difficult to share, and sometimes even when your post is shareable because of a music situation or whatever, they don't let me share. So anyway, but try to try to tag us so we can see those. Um, and then I'm going to ask Delana to give us a membership report, just how many and any new members. Okay, we have, since the last meeting, I'm, I hope I've got everybody. <laughs> we've, got, we've got 110 <laughs> as of this morning, and um, Lauren Sampson and Ron Vassar have joined since their last meeting, so great. Thank Welcome you. And so 110 paid members by the middle of February is, or, you know, almost the end of February is really good. So <laughs> nudge those who maybe haven't renewed to go ahead and do that. Um, and then Charlotte, do you have a treasurer's report for us? Very brief. <laughs> this is from uh, January the 1st. Um, the beginning balance was $7,583.32. And the, uh, we had a, between the expenditures and the income, we had a profit of $6,432.03. And our balance now is $14,015.35. And when I say profit, I should have just said, Net over because we haven't paid for the show yet. So. <laughs> We're doing lots of advertising and all the things to get people to come see your beautiful work. So that's what we want to do. Um, and then I want the show chairs to come and give us an update, Beth and Beverly. Because I know y'all are wanting to know all the things. <laughs> This will be brief, too. <laughs> um, thank y'all for showing up early. I think we've got some good photos. Um, just to let you know, the show is surpassed the capacity. So we will be um, um, going through those. Some people we haven't juried yet and um, just working out some kinks. But I think we're full. 
but we're putting people on a waiting list. So if you are interested, get on a waiting list. You know, you never know. You know, hope nobody has anything that makes them pull out, but you just never know. The circumstances or something may open up. Um, I just want to let you know, uh, the last two years we've had the flowers, the floral contest, and the volunteer work back in the back in the dark dungeon. <laughs> We're going to move them into a tent out front. So uh, be sure to participate in the floral art competition. And if you're a volunteer, you can, uh, you know, you can you can put in one piece. You can actually put up to two pieces, but if you're going to do the floral competition, you can only put one other piece in. So, so we'll have a whole tent. Um, just things are coming along on PR. We've reached out to the TV stations and JJ, and just haven't. That was recent, so I haven't heard back yet. So, things are going good. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I want to real quick, um, we haven't done this before, but um, this is such a generous thing for a local florist to do for our group. Mm -hmm. So those of you who don't know, we have a floral competition. You, Even if you're not in the show, you can still participate. But this year, we, we got it at the February meeting, so you have longer to paint it. It's yeah. out here in the lobby. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa is actually a friend of mine, but also a, a very prominent florist in the Birmingham area and got her start at Birmingham Southern and she has to in art and she's she's just one of us. So um, I just want to introduce Lisa Bailey. And it's an honor to be a part of this really. I really put a lot of thought into what I hope you see as a great piece of art to paint. <laughs> little pieces of something kind right. of creative. That's right. Yes. Thank, thank you, you Lisa. Well. Um, it'll be out here for um, until they will. So yeah, I guess I'm going to work with Janet. But if those of you who want to, I took some pictures of it that we'll post on the website. But if um, any of you guys want to go out there afterwards and shift it just a little bit and take pictures, you can. Awesome. Thank okay. you. All right, I'll be very brief also, but we do need a few more volunteers on the day of the show. So if you're not participating in the show, I, I really hope you might find some time to come over and help us. Um, hospitality booth needs a few people, a couple, three. Um, in the afternoon on the day of the show, we need somebody to greet and direct visitors, and then we also need some people for our floral and volunteer tent, so that's a little bit different. So I'm only sending two around. If you will, um, that's my note here. Volunteer, volunteer. Right, and if this can just come back up to the table, we'll be good. I think that's all. Oh, we're having a, oh. If you're signing up, or if you already have signed up to volunteer, we're having a meeting for the volunteers on March 7th in this building, back in the free council room, at 10 o'clock, March 7th. Okay, ladies, thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about anything? Okay, one of, yes? Will, will we be notified if we got in the show? Or how many yes. Um, as, as of now, uh, have you notified those who are on the waiting list? We're, um, we're getting ready to send everything out to people who have signed up. We okay. just didn't want to respond until we had a feel for, okay. you know. But, no, we've had, we have two or three people on the waiting list. So I think kind of the way they're doing it, the setup is kind of fluid. So... Okay. So they're trying to get as many people in as they can. And just according to how they can set the, the tents and all of that up and the configuration of this room, then we'll, they'll probably know more. So it may be, a, what, what do you think? A week probably or two? in a week, we'll, yeah. we'll start right. notifying people. So we know who the end until we notify people. Right. Okay. Consider yourself in unless notified. Is that or, well, no. we'll notify everybody. So they're going to send yeah. out an email to everybody. Yeah. So you'll know one way or the other. 
And one thing I want to say, one of the very best ways that we can advertise, we're, obviously we're putting ads in new, newspapers, local, and that's where we took the picture. But you all know, you have friends and connections through social media. That's the best way we can advertise. So we've sent you the corrected um, image um, for, for sharing on social media and on your websites and through your email contact lists, however you can share that. And how often you can share that is a good thing. <laughs> so we want everybody doing that. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Martha? <laughs> hey there. It's good to see such a big crowd here. I think they knew Perry was coming. <laughs> I'm so glad um, to have Perry Austin. And I'm going to tell a little bit about him. But I wanted to say that his paintings over here that are on display are for sale. The prices are on the back, if you care to look. And um, go look at them anyway, they're beautiful. And I want to say, I, I've known Perry for a while. He doesn't know that I knew him. <laughs> he knows so many people, but I met him probably 10 years ago, I guess. And But I've followed him longer than that, I guess. And um, he is a very prolific artist. He, he has uh, been a professional. Uh, landscape artist for over 35 years. He worked for NASA in Huntsville as a technical illustrator and visual aids coordinator. I've got to read this y'all because it's a lot. <laughs> um, also at Volt Technical Publication in Anaheim, California. He's a graduate of Auburn University. <laughs> Perry is one of the original founders of the Plain Air Painters of the Southeast, which wow. is a well-known group um, if you're familiar with the Plain Air world at all. Um, he's represented by Beverly McNeil Gallery, and I believe he said you've got some paintings you're getting ready to take down there. He probably has some there. He's been there for a, a long time. And Walls Fine Art in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, home of the Greenbrier, and previously oh, yeah. um, by California Art Gallery. Uh, and then Stonehenge and Anderson Fine Art. He's a popular instructor. He's taught for many, many years. Some of y'all might have taken from him. I know many of you have heard, heard of him and, and are familiar with his work, but he's taught all over the country, and he's received numerous awards for his, his work, and he, um, is, he said he is most proud of the first and second place award presented by esteemed Jean Stern of the Irvine Museum. That's big. <laughs> his paintings are in collections from Spain to Hawaii and many places in between. And he maintains a studio in Silicaga, Alabama. And follow his Facebook page, y'all. It's, it's uh, Perry Austin Art. And he gives tips on it, um, painting tips. And also just shows his work and shows his beautiful farm in Silicaga where he does a lot of his paintings. Um, so we're very glad to have you, Perry. Thank you for coming. I'll give my hand. <laughs> y'all, I did want to tell you, if you do need to take a picture of the floral arrangement, if you can go around back and um, go out that back door and you can go take a picture out there. And also, uh, be sure to sign your name on the sign-up sheet because there are door prizes later for that. Good advice is... When you finish your drawing and get it started, spend about 15 minutes before you start painting on it to make sure it's right. Because I've sat here and watched mine, and I'm going to move that road. <laughs> I want to show more than that. I want this.
Terry? Yes, sir. Tell them what kind of paint you use and why. That was a good one. I'm a, most of my paints are they're, they're, they're gambling, Rembrandt uh, and Lindsay Newton. I've got, uh, I, I buy a lot of different, you know, Lindsay Newton magenta is one I can't do without. Uh, Rembrandt transparent oxide red is another one I can't do without. And I, that's my favorite because it's richer than the rest of them. It's just really <coughs> then I, uh, the palette is pretty standard. Uh, I copied it from Richard Smith. <laughs> so, but that made a lot of sense to me. But years ago, and uh, the rest of them are mostly gambling. Uh, they're, they're available. They're great paints. You know, you spend 40 bucks a cube for old Holland, but I don't see, I don't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. Did you say that magenta was Rembrandt magenta? No, yeah. it's Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What I want to do is paint the dark first, and I want to put in where, uh, where the shapes are. My main shapes. I'm trying my best not to think about objects, just the shapes. Forget what the object is, just get the shapes in it. By the way, this is just a scene, of, I took it in West Virginia when I was up there, just a common scene you see anywhere, uh, nothing that's not majestic, you know, just, <laughs> <laughs> but most of what we see is not majestic, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, but the object of what I want to do with this is just to say, it doesn't need to be anything special, just, you don't need to copy it, you need to make a painting, so, uh, you can change color, you can do whatever, it's your painting, you know, so uh, if you want to make a really detailed copy, take a picture and forget about painting. I don't have any particularly uh, <coughs> other than I like bristle brushes, uh, I like flats, uh, uh -huh. uh, a bright to scrub color in. Uh, I keep a, a couple of soft brushes for blending edges. Uh, y'all, I know you're all familiar with blending edges. Uh, <laughs> Richard Smith made the best comment I've ever heard, and I think it was to Dan Gerhardt who asked him a question years ago. He said, how about treating edges? How do you know, <laughs> you know, how to make that hard one? You got it, that's easy, but when you got to really blend an edge, and Richard Smith said the neatest thing in the world, he said, push the lie as far as you can and still tell the truth. <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> And I do think composition is about the most important thing you can, uh, can do to a painting. Just, just make sure your composition is right. Uh, I still I still go by, before you were here, I kind of ferreted my temple. And, and I want my center of interest, and to me it's center of interest, what, what just, just a color, a contrast. Uh, I don't know how many art books everybody had, but if you like to look at like John Carlson and that ever art book in the world, footnote something that John Carlson said, but, and, uh, but he made the comment, if you get the composition right, it'll almost paint itself. So, uh, and just as a side note, I, I built houses years ago. 
And you know, if you get that foundation out of square, you'll be you'll be trying to connect it all the way through, and it'll still be wrong. But so, make sure your composition is what you want. But I think from dark to light, back to the basics, I always do this. And if you have questions, you can say, say, just, just to sing out. I just want to get some shape clean and with that little brush. And, uh, <coughs> One thing I need to mention real quick that I forgot to say is that Perry has offered to auction this painting off to our group and the proceeds will go back to our group. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. So we'll do that at the end. So some of the colors are not reading quite right on the screen. So what color are you using now? That's just a dark uh, okay. transparent oxide red and ultramarine. Okay. It doesn't, so, doesn't make a lot of difference. Just a dark. And okay. Look. All right. I'm going to use blue. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> well. <laughs> How about on this that one? one I'm going to go down here with a lot of ultramarine blue. <laughs> Okay. So, so you're doing you're, thinned paint, so that whatever the final color is, well, that'll just be underneath it. Is yes, right? this is just a map. Yeah, you know, yeah. right. I so at this I don't point, you're just getting myself, the values. I do not consider myself painting at this point. Gotcha. Because as soon as you think you're in painting mode, you get tight. <laughs> so I always think of this as a building process. Yeah. This, the road map. Yeah. Makes it a lot easier on you, you know. You don't have so much to trail. Uh, and an old friend of mine is Ted Gershner. I don't know if y'all know him. He did a demo for us, and uh, it had three main trees in the foreground, and that's what he did. He painted one alizarin, one ultramarine, and one some other guy, three dots. He said, if you get the value right, it doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. And he was right, you know. And, uh, and Dad was fast. That painting I'm speaking of, I bought that painting. And for some reason, I don't know why, he was explaining it. When he bent over and he picked up his panel, I hit my stopwatch. And when he completed that painting, it was just 9 to 12, wasn't it? It was 26 minutes. Wow. wow. 26 minutes. So that's what painting every day in a mild canvas will do for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I still love the painting. Mm -hmm. So do you paint every day? No. <laughs> I have 27 acres and a wife. <laughs> I have a lot of other duties. There. Understandable. <laughs>
struts are not big enough. Oh. Now, I don't know if you see that there's a little mud puddle in the foreground. I'm going to leave it out mm -hmm. because it's, it's like another spot to draw your attention. Mm -hmm. you know, Putting that in real thin. Okay. Do you want me to hold it up so people can see what you're painting? Because I can see, but I think yeah, they might like to see it. Put it on the yeah. camera. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. And your surface is a panel? Yeah. The, the, that's a piece of multi-directional. They call it the MDF board. You can buy it at Home Depot. They'll even cut it for you. And uh, it has three coats of gesso on it. Okay. And, uh, they will cut it for you? Yeah. Yeah, you can ask. So please cut it up in 12, 16. <laughs> they may frown when you ask them. To. <laughs> <laughs> Gesso coating on it? Yeah, I put three, three coats of gesso, let it dry. Do you apply that gesso with a roller or a brush? A brush. A brush. Yeah. Not for any particular reason, not just yeah. a brush is handy, so it, you can do it either way. Are you still not painting? I'm not painting. I'm just, <laughs> it looks like I'm painting. I'm just putting tabs on it. I'm just locating little things I want to, you know, so. Mm -hmm. It's just Gamsol. Yeah. Now, I don't have it any other medium. Colors I'm laying in, I'm just uh, I want everything in the foreground mostly to be warm. And I can adjust it as I go out.
going to take just a minute while he's working and we're all just paying attention, but if the two new members, we usually have our new members to stand up and introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about what you do. So I'm going to take this time to let them do that just briefly. Jerome, would you uh, just <laughs> tell us what medium, introduce yourself okay. and tell us what medium you'd like to work on. Sure. And I'm anything working. else you want to tell us? I'm Jerome Basin. Uh, this reminds me of church. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you stand up. <laughs> I'm Jerome Basin. I went to Maria College in Kentucky. Oh, Got an art degree. Awesome. Joined the military. Did art for the military illustrations back in the day when we had to do illustrations. Uh, since then, I came back and retired here in Alabama with my wife, Brenda Vesa, who is a nurse at Children's of Alabama. Uh, one of my best friends is Larry Allen. A lot of you guys know Larry. Oh, yes. Yvonne here is a great friend of mine. I know Mike. I know Jeff. And several people I already know because I was on the board at Artists Incorporated, uh, which oh, we recently yeah. shut down. But uh, I paint oils, acrylics, drawing, and that kind of thing. And just a pleasure to be here. So I sketched my whole life, and then I went through a difficult time about 10 years ago and painted, and it really helped me out a lot. And I got out of the habit, and I went through another difficult time of those things kind of come and go, and uh, I, it really helped me a whole lot. And so my wife got me lessons with Dory um, um, 
at Red Dot Gallery. Yeah. And uh, I just love Dory. She's she's you know just a tough, nice lady, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and so that really helped me uh, turn it into a little bit more of a craft with oil paints. And so um, I've been painting and landscapes with oil. Um, I went back to school a couple years ago and have really got out of the habit. Not because school is so demanding, but that ends in two weeks, and I can't wait to just go full in with more painting and be a more active member of this wonderful group. So uh, thank you for finally having me. Bev and Beverly, I paid my dues, okay? <laughs> I came in, so thank you guys so much. And I know uh, Casey Moore. I know you from Instagram, yeah. too. Okay. I've seen your posts, but haven't seen you post a lot of artwork. So yeah. hope, hope to see more of that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Else. Don't be shy. <laughs> Are we good? Okay. Ooh, that painting is taking shape up there. You know, one thing I realized about artists and art years ago, every artist is self-taught. Nobody can teach you to paint. You see how I paint, or you can see how anyone else paints, and then, you know, Ronald, he and I have been friends for a long time. We paint differently, kind of. Uh, we both end up with a good painting. Uh, but you, you just think, like, who talks Rembrandt? You know, you fight that battle yourself, and you, you win it over time. By the way, my degree is in marketing. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally self-taught too but you, you know you look at all the art books and all the influences you get you, you still have to condense all that into what you want to do that's right um, so I, I, essentially I think everyone's self-taught and the other thing is, is paint what you want to paint because as old Jack White said in his book <laughs> I've never had a collector ask me how many awards I won. Right. Just think about it. That's a good, good so, thought. So, they say what they want. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Anything? I have a question. Just, um, I always love it when people put that many colors on there, but how do you choose the Cause I ever wanted to. See that color here? Yes. Yeah, it's just I'm just I'm just saying here's where I want that. Yeah. That's not the final color. That's, right. that's just a know, shape. That's so just like a shape. The tree on the left is really red right now, which I'm sure will make it more yeah. vibrant and beautiful, but it's not red in the picture. So I was wondering how you chose. Well, that. I was doing that on purpose a while ago when. It, it, to show it didn't really matter what color. It really matter. Okay. Yeah. He's, uh, it's a shape, it's a, and he's okay. going to paint probably yeah. over that. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I was just trying to make a point. It needs to be darker. How's that? No, it's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> And if you can do it without talking, we allow you to get up and walk around if you need to yeah. see better or if you're just interested in his palette or whatever. Just try to keep the noise level down in case he tells us something important. <laughs> not likely. feel like I need to address Lauren's question just a little bit. Y'all forgive me for thinking I know stuff because I don't, <laughs> but I just, when you know something that excites you, you want to share it. But I used to have trouble seeing color in a landscape like that. I mean, I've always heard that the background was cool and whatnot, but if you ever want to train your eye to see color and nuance of color, warm versus cool, you know, is this a 
green light. I went in right. There's a little app called Blendoku. Have y'all ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. Blendoku. I, I have an iPhone, so that's what it is. Blendoku, like Sudoku. But it takes you through a progressive, starts with like values, training you to see the lightest shade of blue to the darkest. Man, it gets harder and harder by getting so tricky. Is this more blue? Is this more green? Is this more yellow? It's the first portrait I painted after doing that app for a few weeks. I was astounded at the um, ability to see in flesh tones nuance of color. Blend up it. Anyway, if you ever use it and like it, let me know. <laughs> I'm fixing to put the first white in the thing. I haven't touched the panel of white paint yet. It's all thin. Well, white is not your friend. Right. Uh, it's the coolest color on your palette. Uh, once you get it on and you try to There's paint no dark over it, it's almost right. impossible. Uh, just as an exercise, put your dab of ultramarine blue and a dab of white and lighten the ultramarine and darken the white. <laughs> and you'll see, it'll take a tube of ultramarine to darken That's the right. white. That's <laughs> right. So stay away from it. Also, <laughs> you were talking about as colors of seed, they get bluer and dirtier, mm -hmm. except white. White gets warmer as it recedes. And then, so that works opposite. And you can see that all during the summertime on a faraway cloud or thunderstorm, they, they're orange or yeah. yellow. Mm -hmm. or so white gets warmer. So uh, it, That's it, it's just a nice little thing there. Do you ever tone your canvas? Yeah. Or do you always work on white? No? I just do whatever turn you on. <laughs> 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 and another thing you need to think about, uh, whether you ever thought about it or not, it's all about time investment, if you, yeah. you think about it. Because if you start a 9 by 12, or you start at 30 by 40. Well, you'll find out real quick on the 9 by 12, if you're, if you're paying attention to composition, you'll know that you screwed up fairly early. <laughs> so if you did that, wipe it off and start again. So if you start 30 by 40, it takes a lot longer to realize that you mm -hmm. messed up. And it's, you're more reticent to start over, which is a bad thing. You, you should just start over. <laughs> uh, so it just uh, it, it just works that way. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Your technique is very much like a watercolor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you also paint in watercolor? Uh, yeah. But not a lot. I used to do a lot more watercolor, but after I started working with galleries, they don't like them. And uh, I know Evelyn Lagerquist told me years ago that she'd have decorators take her watercolors out, you know, to try them in homes. And uh, she had a couple brought back where they, when they brought them in and took them out, it was visual or whatever, and a little water ran behind the glass. And, she said, you know, they all when they bring them back, they always turn and face to the wall and leave. <laughs> so anyway, so and the glass breaks, and so uh, so I just decided to go with oil, to, you know, kind of fits that satisfies everybody pretty much. But I do like watercolor. Yeah.
Is there a type of scene you're is like your favorite to paint, like a woods or golf course or mountains or? Uh, no, I don't get. I, 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 just the landscape. I like spring. I like marsh. You know. You're easy to please. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Life's a lot easier that way. So now you're painting, right? I'm kind of painting. Now. <laughs> <laughs> You've got thicker paint. And hold your brush that way. Don't don't hold it like a pencil. Mm -hmm. Get your arm involved in making strokes. And, you know, don't worry about it. It's just pain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, you, you don't get so serious about it. That's, you know, I could get right here. I could scrape it off, start again, and I've mm -hmm. lost what 20, 30 minutes, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I'm 81, so 20, 20 minutes don't seem like a lot to me anymore. <laughs> By the way, I got out quite a bit of paint on my paddle. Yeah. Do you mind. usually use all that or uh, for that size? Well, I, I paint often enough that I can, you know, <coughs> save it. Okay. And just remember, the object is to use the paint, not mm -hmm. to save it. Yeah. <laughs> when I get in trouble is when I say, I run out of, just say, breathing. So suddenly, instead of stopping to get the gradient, I'll get some ultramarine and yellow and try to make it just can't, you know. Not so the same. <laughs> just keep the paints out there that you need. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot easier that way because yeah. you'll, you'll always end up trying to smear something and smudge it to get the painting right where you, where you it wanted off. to go if you just had a little more gradient. <laughs> <laughs> See how much time I'm taking with this. Yeah. I'm just trying to get some color down.
so I am just so addicted to. I found its own Prime, Amazon Prime, but it's Portrait Artist of the Year. Yeah. And oh, how many y'all watch it? Them. Mm -hmm. I love it. Is it not that? I mean, can you talk about inspiring you to paint? Mm -hmm. It is. There's landscape artists of the year okay. and portrait, and there's several seasons, so you can just binge watch the wow. things. Yeah, you can also get it on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube, okay, good. Yeah. But y'all, if you haven't watched it. I'm so glad that somebody else is in Oh, I'm, I'm, it. Like to it. I'm like so sad because I'm on the last season of Portrait Artists right now. But it's so Yeah, it's great. Uh, I, again, I can. That's right. Well, I watch it on Amazon Prime. Um, but some, she watches it on YouTube. Yeah. But just so, portrait artist of the year. It's a British show, um, and and it's funny. I mean, the host is real funny, and it's just they have like seven artists and that compete each time, and then they go to a final and paint a famous person for a museum. It's just it's so good. I don't know. We're, there's such a glare that we're not really getting a color reading here. But that's okay. Is it better? Is it better? It's better. It's a little better. It's a lot better. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we need to be able to see all those colors he's using under in the under layers. It's a lot darker in real than it is on the screen. So take all those colors and deepen them a little bit in your mind. I had been looking at Spain, but you're right. So. <laughs> you know, when I started, we just painted outside. <laughs> I never heard of playing there. <laughs> I think Kevin McPherson is the guy that really brought plain air to the forefront about, what, 30 years ago, and suddenly it became so important. So he traveled the world and did a ton of six by eights just everywhere he went, all plain air. Who and was that? Kevin McSeary. By the way, I live in a little community named Hollins, you know, no city or anything. I do a painting afternoon in Hollins, but if I decide to name it Afternoon in Provence, it'll sell quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Did everybody sign in? Who knows that one of the requirements for getting into the show is that you've attended two meetings in the previous year. And if you haven't, you have to volunteer and do, th do things to, you know, help you feel. So if, we, if you don't sign in, then we don't know you've been here. So please try to remember to sign in when you come. It's hard because I just signed in because I didn't remember to do it. Yeah. So, you know, I don't always
And we want to just take a minute to say thank you so much to Elemental Art Supply, Forestall, and to Dick Lick. They all have donated generously to our door prizes for meetings.
Oh, miracle muck. Miracle muck. Miracle, muck. Muck. miracle muck. Miracle muck. Yeah. Yes. Made by Raphael. So he buys the linen by the roll. Some of these panels, and he buys it by the roll and does it himself. <laughs> what are they mounted on? Are y'all familiar with ASW Art Supply? ASW. No. No. Art Supply. Jerry's owns it. Oh, it's a oh, wholesale okay. outfit, and I, I don't know what it is now, but okay. you have to pay 50 bucks for a membership, and you got about half off, so 
Those landing rolls that I was buying at eight hundred and fifty-five dollars, I could get them for four hundred and something. Okay. And this, this is a six foot by eight. Gotcha. Right. Right. So you you make your own frames? No. For those? No. No. You had somebody no. do that? That's, no, that's yeah. another world. It is another <laughs> yeah. world. Yeah. But, uh, but you built houses. But, but I know. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Like, yeah. Well, <laughs> kind of paid for it. That's a little different. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I just bought three frames. If you want really quality frames for your work, and it, 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 it is. I bought three frames from Stephen Barnhill out in Silver City, Idaho. Makes the most fabulous gold leaf frames you've ever seen. Mm. Uh, Say that again. Stephen Barnhill. Barnhill. It's A A U like symbol for gold. A U frames. Oh. Dot com. And you'll see Steve Barnhill makes it. Him and two other guys. Uh, he's running about six months out. If I wanted frames in September, I need to order them now. Mm. Oh, wow. But uh, anyway, the point I'm making is, they, I don't know who it was way back, said the frame is the artist's reward. Oh, they, yes, You know, frame will make the break. The point I'm getting at, those three, three 18 by 24, $2,700. <coughs> So, I can't put that frame in the show in Silicon what you know, or something. It goes to the green bar. But there's a lot of there's a lot of people who have more than, than uh, uh, just a little bit of expendable cash, but and and they want the nicest thing. So if you can. Those frames will only go to a certain gallery as well because uh, he worked with gold leaf and he knows how to treat them. If you not, if your gallery is not used to gold, really nice gold leaf frame, like a little piece of tape sticking to it, and the gold mm -hmm. leaf comes off. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got a nine hundred dollar frame just turned into a forty dollar frame, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you know, galleries sliding them in and out, oh, man. taking it. Yeah. You know, you just have to be real careful and. Mm -hmm. But I don't order many of those, but for the gallery up to Greenbrier, I do because those people, you know, that's their second and third homes, you know, and a membership in the sporting club at the Greenbrier, if you own a home there, is $120,000 a year. So that's why you don't mind sending no expensive frames yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing to me. Harry, how do you decide whether you're going to use a panel that's like you did this with a gesso or if you're going to put linen on a whatever you uh, mounted that on, just whatever you have? Uh, well, I'm, I make a lot of these. Yeah. Uh, and I paint a lot, and a lot of them never go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just paint. Uh, practice is more than anything else. But, but they're, they're good boards. I mean... Uh, Mark Boges, a lot of people use these for all their paintings, you know. It's a, it's a good, solid uh, archival board. Is the gesso a slicker finish than You do the have your one. He so said uh, a lot of people use those for all their paintings. Yeah, especially plain air stuff. Right. Uh, and, uh, They're easy to carry. Yeah, and... Uh, Transport. This particular easel, it would be hard for me to put a canvas up there. Because these, right, because it's small. Are, you know, right. angled to hold. Carry. Harry, do you sand in between the coats of gesso? Yeah. Do you sand in between your coats yeah. of gesso? No, I, if I want to sand it, I'll sand the last coat. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, and sometimes I just literally dab the brush in it to give some texture, yeah. you know, to, to do something. So it's all kind of... Are you using acrylic gesso? Yes.
wondered if you were going to do anything to that wife. <laughs> Yes. Hey, pardon. You doing the sky? Yeah. Uh -huh. What are you using? White and a touch of magenta. Magenta. Okay. Yeah, I can see hints of just a hint of pink. Just yeah. Just do you do you know the five planes of values that talks and talks about? You're always you're uh, you're looking through more atmosphere, looking straight. So right. it tends to be warmer and redder, and then it gets. Uh, you know, it goes to like a magenta, mm -hmm. and right. it keeps fading into blue and green and blue and going up. If you so, you can exaggerate on your painting right. that sometimes, and it just makes them more attractive. Depending on what kind of painting you're trying to do, I guess. But uh, I like to do it. Painting the 18 by 24 for the gallery at the three brides. Would that be linen, canvas? What would you do? Isn't he? Uh, either. I've, I've just finished a couple of 18 by 24s on this, and I've got some ordered centurion linen panels. They're, they're nice. Uh, I can stretch it. Uh, I just stretched a 48 by 60. It took me almost a week. <laughs> Every time I'd finish, I'd see this little wrinkle running across somewhere. You have to take it back out. But I finally got it right. But if you bought a 48 by 60 stretched linen, it'd be close to $500 if you bought it. Don't we have an Alabama art? Yeah, yeah. Caleb. Yeah. Caleb will do it. What are you painting on that? What are you going to paint on that piece on the 48? I'm painting on it now. So, yeah. what is it? Go to my Facebook page. Oh, no. Back a few days. I, I just I posted uh, progressive paintings you know, with uh, one long. So, it's a, it's a, it's the same from Yellowstone. Uh, it's Rose Creek. A little stone bridge. You never know it was a stone bridge if you're driving through Yellowstone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, artists like to go out and walk around. You know, <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, it's, uh, all right. Now, I'm going to years ago in the, the uh, room next to us we were on the drafting board and the next room was where they did the space concepts you know and all mm -hmm. that stuff Renato Mancini and Albert Lane were just fabulous painters, you know they did you know planets and spacecraft and all this and the term that I picked up is what they were saying somebody had come in and say that looks pretty good you know and Albert Lane would say and 20 yards on a galloping horse, it looks even better. <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's a, close to how close you stand to a painting. <laughs> If you've only seen what's on the screen, you need to come up here and look at the colors on the panel. It is gorgeous. Oh, it's fine. 
Still a good crowd. <laughs> Madison has an announcement about a show that might be worth doing. So, um, I don't know how many of y'all have heard of the Harding Art Show in Nashville. Kind of a, you know, 2040 big thing. Uh, <laughs> um, I applied, didn't get in, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it's fine, it's fine. Take a number, get in line, starts back there. Um, there is a new show in Mobile that is kind of Alabama, they, I think they're projecting it to be Alabama's equivalent to the Harding Show. This is the first year they've done it. It's called the Loyola Art Show, as in Loyola University. Um, it's in Mobile. Um, it is um, juried. Um, it's through Zap, y'all are on Zap. Um, applications just went in, I think it was $50 to apply, maybe. Um, and they send out, um, <laughs> Um, acceptance letters in May, and then I think the show is in August, I think. So but this is the, open. Mm, yeah, still open, um, but this is the first year they've done it, so um, they're really needing people. It's a really great venue in Mobile, and they give you everything. Oh, so wow. setup-wise, all you got to do is bring the work. So um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with A.K. Hardman here in yeah. Birmingham, but she's uh, she's doing it. Um, and they've got some really good people so far. So it'd be a good opportunity to get in on the ground floor of a new annual show. So Loyola, L O Y, L O L A. The university's in New Orleans. Uh, the show is in Mobile. And it's no affiliation. It's just oh. the name of the show. Oh. Oh. Something to something. Is, is it just two big words? I don't know. Again, first year they've done it, so I would imagine. I don't know. But it's inside, it's also inside, and they're really beautiful. Where is it going to be held? Um, I don't remember the name of the venue, okay. but it's. Um, it, it, it looks lovely. Just look it up. They're also on Instagram, so follow them. Um, okay. So the LayolaArtShow.com. That.
did you leave that tree out in the background? Beg your pardon? Why'd you leave the tree out in the background? Because it's right in the middle. It didn't, it didn't need it. So the, your, your image is a rough guide. <laughs> it's an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Love it. That's a great thing about painters versus a photographer. Yeah. They can't read it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> having that, being able to see more of the sky, giving more of the contrast is more important. Probably not going to be too much in Yeah, I just didn't like the idea that that much going on out in the middle. Yeah. So this is kind of a circle composition chart. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm ASSOC. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We had to abbreviate, I think, on that one. I'm not sure. So so how many are on there? They're linked on our um, Facebook page. Oh, okay. 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 I just didn't know you were posting. And they're on the website. Like, if you go to the website, they're, on, they're embedded in a post. So, like, okay. I'll show you. Like, the last, like, Madison's. There. There you go. So, that's good. Are you going to antique layer? I do. Did you put it on there? I did. Was... Okay. Did it come down? Yeah, I did. The way you jump around on that thing. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so that's Madison's. Okay. And you can from just watch it right there if you need yeah, to. Okay. Yeah. But this one will be the next you know, thing probably that gets posted. And what, where is this? This is on the This is the website, networkartassociation.com. And it has advertising on it? Well, it's not advertising. It's just as thank yous to our door prize. <laughs> oh, but I saw, yeah, Blick also. Yeah, they okay. donate. They know donate that. door prizes for okay. us. Yeah. I didn't know that. That the what I'm in love with is the foreground on the And you can't it you could not it is incredible. 